In this section, our goal is to be able to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. Let's take a look at situation number one. During the period 1990 to 2002, the average costs D in dollars for a new domestic car and the average costs I in dollars for a new imported car can be modeled by these equations. This equation with D equals and this equation with I equals where t is the number of years since 1990. Find the difference in the average costs for a new imported car and a new domestic car in 2002. Find the difference, remember difference means to subtract. So we are asked to subtract this function and this function. These kinds of functions are called polynomials. Poly means many. There are many terms in each of these functions. That's just part of what a polynomial is. Before we begin subtracting these polynomials, let's talk about what a polynomial is, what it's made up of, how to write it, and then we'll get into adding and subtracting. First, let's start with a monomial. That's a number or a variable or the product of a number and one or more variables with whole number exponents. Mono is the prefix that means one, one term. Whereas poly, for polynomial, poly means many. So this is many terms. A polynomial is a monomial or a sum of monomials, each called a term of the polynomial. So a monomial, for example, could be just two, a number, could be a variable like x, or it could be a product of a number and a variable like 2x. It has to have whole number exponents, so that means it could be x to the fifth or 3x to the fifth. Standard form is usually the way that we write a polynomial. Standard form of a polynomial is when we write it with descending order of the degree of the terms. Descending means decreasing, going down. Descending, think down, going down. So for example, this is a polynomial in standard form. Notice the exponents are called the degrees. Those are going down. Those are decreasing or descending. The first term, this is one term right here, the first term has an exponent of 3. Then the second term is x squared. That has an exponent of 2. Then the third term, negative 5x, has an exponent of 1. You don't see it. It's an exponent of 1. And then the fourth term, or the constant term, positive 12, has no x's. That's like saying x to the 0 when there's no x's. So descending order, 3, 2, 1, and then nothing. The number in front, when written in standard form, is called the leading coefficient of the polynomial. The highest exponent is called the degree of the polynomial. We want to think of degree as highest exponent, the greatest exponent, the largest number exponent. And then you have the constant term, which is the term that has no variable with it. So constant term, think number with no variable. There are different kinds of polynomials. A binomial is a polynomial with two terms. A trinomial is a polynomial with three terms. Notice the prefix bi, like bicycle, means two. The prefix tri, like triangle, means three. 
Example, rewrite 15x minus x cubed plus 4 in standard form. Then identify the degree and the leading coefficient. So let's rewrite that polynomial. Notice the biggest exponent is x cubed. Notice is 3. So x cubed should go in the front. The sign that's in front goes with it. Negative x cubed. Next, I have a term that has x and I have a term that has no x. So the one that goes next will be the term with just x. Notice there's no sign in front, so that's a positive 15x. Finally, the last term, positive 4, the constant term, plus 4. Now the degree. Remember, the degree is the largest exponent. So I look at the exponent for the term that went first. The degree is 3. And the leading coefficient is the number that's multiplied in front of that first term. Notice what's in front here, a negative 1. This is the same as saying negative 1 x cubed. So the leading coefficient is negative 1. Now let's talk about how to add and subtract polynomials. Add polynomials by combining like terms, like we do when we solve equations. Subtract polynomials by first changing all of the signs of the polynomial being subtracted and then combining like terms. Let's take a look at some examples. Add or subtract the polynomials. In parentheses, we have the first one, 2x squared minus 5x plus 7 plus 2x plus x squared minus 1. There's two ways we can do this. One way is to notice all the like terms. This is positive 2x squared, and this is positive x squared. Now, it might seem like, like I'm ignoring the parentheses, but that's just because I'm adding. So really, what we can do first is say, this polynomial plus this polynomial, I'm just adding each of these. So this is the same as saying 2x squared minus 5x plus 7 plus all of these terms, 2x plus x squared minus 1. Now let's look for the like terms. 2x squared, this has an x squared in it, this has an x squared in it. This is like saying 1x squared. So I have 2x squared plus 1x squared. That makes 3x squared. What are some other like terms? Let's take it down in standard form. The next ones are the x's, negative 5x and positive 2x. Notice I'm going with the sign that's in front. Negative 5 and positive 2 makes negative 3 x. Finally, I have the constant term, positive 7 and negative 1. Positive 7 added to negative 1 makes positive 6. So there's my polynomial in standard form, 3x squared minus 3x plus 6. There's our polynomial that has been combined from these two polynomials. Here's another way that we can look at to do it. Let's write the first polynomial, 2x squared minus 5x plus 7, and then let's line up the like terms under each other. So see the x squared is first, let's put this x squared first. So positive x squared. The next is the x to the first term. So the x to the first term is 2x, so positive 2x, and then the third term is the constant, the constant is negative 1, minus 1. Then I can draw a line and combine each column. 2x squared plus 1x squared makes 3x squared. Negative 5x plus 2x, negative 3x and 7 minus 1, positive 6. Same answer, just a different method. You pick the way that works best for you. Let's look at the second example. Notice that I'm subtracting. 
So if we're subtracting, that's like saying negative 1 multiplied to this polynomial. First, let's change all the signs by distributing negative 1 to this trinomial. Let's see what we get when we do that. 4x squared plus 5 stays the same because there's nothing here multiplied but 1. Negative 1 times negative 2x squared is positive 2x squared. Negative 1 times positive 2x is negative 2x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. Now we can combine like terms. I'm going to do it the way where we leave it like this and look for what's like each other. 4x squared and positive 2x squared make 6x squared. Instead of doing the constant term next, I'm going to look for the x to the first. There's only one of them, negative 2x. Then I have the constant term, positive 5 and positive 4 make positive 9. And there's my answer. 6x squared minus 2x plus 9. In standard form, let's try one more. Again, I'm subtracting. Negative 1 gets distributed to this trinomial. Now let's write it without parentheses. 5x squared minus 6xy plus 3y squared Negative 1 times 8x squared, negative 8x squared. Negative 1 times 3xy, negative 3xy. Negative 1 times negative 4y squared makes positive 4y squared. Now let's look for what's like each other. 5x squared, and here's another x squared. I don't see any more x's that have x squared, so those are the only two that are like each other so far. 5 minus 8 makes negative 3, and those are x squared terms. Next, negative 6xy, where's another xy? Here we go. Those are like each other because they have the same variables. Negative 6 of these, negative 3 of these together make negative 9 of these xy terms. Finally, we've got some y squared terms, positive 3y squared, and positive 4y squared. That makes positive 7y squared. And we've done it. Negative 3x squared minus 9xy plus 7y squared. Now let's talk about multiplying polynomials. When we see multiply, we want to think of distributing. Multiply polynomials by distributing. What does that look like? Multiply the polynomials. So 4g is multiplied to the binomial 2g plus 3. Let's distribute 4g to both of these terms. 4g times 2g, 4 times 2 makes 8. g times g makes g squared. 4g times positive 3 makes positive 12g. That's it. B looks a little bit more complicated, but it's still distributing. Distribute the 5x to this binomial. 5x times x makes 5x squared. 5x times negative 4 makes negative 20x. Now let's distribute negative 3 to this binomial. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, and then don't forget about the positive 8 at the end. Nothing's multiplied to that. Now that we've distributed and we have no more parentheses, we will combine like terms. 5x squared, I don't see anything like 5x squared, so I'm just going to write 5x squared again. That one's all by itself. Do I have any x's? Yes, I do. I have negative 20x's and negative 6x's. That makes negative 26x. Negative 15 and positive 8, those can combine because they're both constant terms. That makes negative 7. And there's my polynomial 5x squared minus 26x 
minus 7. Let's try a few more. This time we're multiplying a binomial times a binomial. This is distributing first this one to this binomial and then the other term. x times x makes x squared. x times 3 makes positive 3x. Remember to put the sign in the front. Now let's distribute the positive 5 to both of these terms. Positive 5 times x makes positive 5x. Positive 5 times positive 3 makes positive 15. Now we will combine like terms. This is the only x squared, so I will rewrite it. I have a positive 3x and a positive 5x that are like each other. That makes positive 8x. And then I have 15 is the only constant term, so plus 15. And there's my answer, a trinomial. Maybe you can pause the video, try the other ones, come back and see how you did. Binomial times binomial. Let's take 3x and multiply by distributing. 3x times 2x. First, 3 times 2 makes 6. x times x makes x squared. 3x times 7y. 3 times 7 Oh, sorry, negative 7 makes negative 21, x times y, like that. Now let's distribute positive y to both of these. Positive y times 2x is positive 2xy. Positive y times negative 7y is negative 7y squared. Now we can combine like terms. 6x squared is the only x squared. Negative 21xy and positive 2xy combine to make negative 19xy. And then we only have negative 7y squared. One more. x distributes x times x is x squared x times positive 3, positive 3x. Now, negative 3 times x makes negative 3x. Negative 3 times 3, negative 9. x squared, the only one. N positive 3x's and negative 3x's make 0x's. And then finally, the constant term, negative 9. Now, I wrote 0x's, but that's kind of silly because 0x is nothing. So we should write our answer x squared minus 9. This is called a difference of squares. We'll talk more about those special patterns soon. Take a couple minutes to write a short summary. Describe the difference between adding polynomials and multiplying polynomials. See you in class.